Hello. And welcome back to the Me, Myself and Hopefully You podcast, episode number four, um, if you don't include the pilot episode. And Happy New Year, everyone. As you can see, I have gone bold and I've had a trim. The beard is looking a little bit better. I mean, the line is off. What is that? Um, the line is better on this side. As you, I mean, if you're listening on Spotify, you can't see. But basically, the line is slightly better on one side of the beard. And the other side is absolutely awful. I used to be so good at trimming my beard. And then when I stopped trimming it and letting arms do it, I sort of lost the skill. And then I tried doing it and it was just, it was just awful. But yeah, gone completely bold. Um... Because, annoyingly, we went into tier 4 the day before, literally the day, 12 hours before I was meant to get a haircut, which um, was extremely frustrating because I really wanted to get a haircut. My hair was all over the place. It felt really heavy. I had one booked before I got COVID, so I had to rebook it for the 31st of December and that sort of flopped because we went into tier 4. But, you know what, I keep on talking about COVID in every single episode and I am still going to talk about COVID because... I sort of do slightly want to talk about what's gone in the news um, in these in these episodes. I feel like that's potentially what some of you guys want me to talk about. Um, if that's not what you want me to talk about, if you want me to talk about something else, then let me know. Um, but, you know, we're all in tier four now. What is it? Like three quarters of the country is now in tier four, um, which is a bit annoying. But you can't really do anything about it, can you? Um I think the rest of the country is pretty much locked down in all but name, isn't it? Um, although they're not closing down schools, which is a topic for today about whether they should close down schools, whether they shouldn't. I don't know. I honestly don't know. I don't think anyone knows. I don't think Boris knows. I don't think the Labour leader knows. I don't think anyone actually knows what they're talking about. It's just it's just too depressing. But, you know, we move on. We've got to move on. Um I hope everyone had a nice New Year's inside with their families, maybe with the mu- music on or whatever. Um, I mean, my one was pretty bog standard, just chilled at home. Um, should have been doing an essay. Still not done that essay. That's due in a week tomorrow. Brilliant. Not even started it. 2,500 words were 66% of my degree. Not even started it. Yeah. My motivation used to be so high for academic stuff. It just isn't anymore. It really isn't. I look so fat with a bald head, like I look like an egg. Honestly, you should have seen it when it's completely shaved. If I didn't have a beard, it would just be awful. But anyway, yeah, my motivation is just, wow. I don't know. I keep thinking, I'm like, in a week from now, I'll, I'll be at uni again. I'm just like, I can't be bothered going back almost. I want to be doing something that I really enjoy doing. I just need to figure out what it is. I know I want to be doing something a bit more hands on. But not hands-on in the sense of, you know, woodwork. And I really wish I was into that sort of stuff, like, you know, carpentry and plumbing or being an electrician. Because one, that is something that the world will always need. Yeah, it's a secure job. Two, it is very good money. Like, there's always jobs going, so you will make good money. And three, you know, have you seen those people that, like, build their own house pretty much from scratch? Just, like, imagine if you could do that. Imagine how good you'd feel to walk into your kitchen knowing you built, like, 70% of that kitchen. It must be amazing. Or that, I mean, I bought a fan, like, six months ago, yeah. Um, I bought a fan, and it came in, like, pieces, and I was like, oh, I don't even know how to do this. And I built it. It only took, like, 10 minutes. I was the happiest person in the world, because it was the first thing I'd ever actually probably built, right? But it felt so good, and I was like, imagine if you, like, built a whole kitchen, or you built a loft, or whatever, like, and you built, like, even if you built only 10% of it, it would feel so good. And there are people that, like, build 90% of it, save thousands. And I know someone that built, that extended their loft or somewhere. And they did it all, pretty much, majority of it by themselves, putting an ensuite suite and everything. And saved 20,000 pounds by doing it themselves. 20,000 pounds. Like, obviously, they spent a lot of time on it. But 20, that's nearly a full year's salary. A full year salary that was saved by doing it themselves. Like think about how many more holidays you can go on. Think about how nice it looks. And you'll do a good job. At the end of the day, you'll do a good job because you've done it yourself. And, you know, you're not going to have to deal with other people and, like, dodgy, you know, cowboy builders. If anyone watched that show, it was a brilliant show. But, I, I mean, I really wish I was into that stuff. But I'm not. But then at the same time, I don't feel like I'm into academic uh, academia anymore. I just can't see myself reading books upon books, you know, to get my dissertation done. I just can't see myself doing that. And so... And that's partially why I started the podcast, um, just to sort of see what I can get into um, and just to almost have proof that I've done something outside of academia. Um, you know, if I apply to something, that's, you know, whatever. Um, 
I mean, I started, I can't believe I was doing this, but I was, I was, I literally went online yesterday and I was like, oh, what, you know, those quiz that you can do that tell you what job you should do. And they were quite interesting. Some of them, you know, were the typical ones, politician or diplomat or, you know, accountant or whatever. And, and there's some of them, you know, I don't know. I feel, I, you know, it was weird because before I started uni, I was also thinking about journalism and I thought, you know, what, I'd really like to be a journalist. It'd be quite interesting, particularly like broadcast journalism you know, to do with TV and radio. Because um, I've always found that quite interesting. And I, I like speaking. I want something where I can speak. I know that for a fact. I don't want some... I, I don't want a nine-to-five office job. Because even though you are working with other people, I want to be able to speak to a big audience, right? Um, or just to be able to, like, you know, just speak and be a bit more creative. Like, I'm not a creative guy. Or, and I don't have an imagination. But I like speaking. I like, you know, as you can see, I like using my hands. Um, public speaking is something definitely that I want my job to entail. Or my dream job to entail. Or my dream career. I just, again, don't know what it is. And I think right now, I'm just like, what the hell am I going to do? And I'm looking online, trying to find bits and bobs. Still sort of struggling as to what it is that I want. Um, I mean, I've always said my dream career. Right, like the dream job would be to be a stand-up comedian. But the issue with that is I ain't funny enough to be a stand-up comedian. Okay, I would love to be a stand-up comedian. Just to stand there, perform, you know, make people laugh, which is like the best feeling ever. When you can make someone laugh, you have done something incredible because you've changed their emotions. They've gone from just watching you to then having an outward expression. And the outward expression is good. Sometimes, you know, if you make someone cry, it's not very good. But it's an outward expression, so it must have been something powerful. It has to be something powerful to get someone to outwardly express themselves. So when you out get them to outwardly express themselves by laughing, it's the best thing ever. And it, you know, it, it, it sends endorphins or whatever they're bloody called um, to your brain or whatever the science is behind it. And you feel good about it because it's brilliant. So I'd love to do that. And when I do make like the one or two people laugh, which is very rare, but when I do, it feels great. And... I mean, I'd love to do that for a living. I'm just not funny enough. But I feel like I have the sort of qualities that I needed. Because if you look at comedians, they're, you know, a lot of them tend to be, you know, into politics, into history, you know, into um, current affairs. And they make jokes about that. Um, and I've got all, I've, I'm into all of that sort of stuff. You know, I'm confident enough to, like, get on and speak to people. The only issue is that I just don't have jokes. Um, so if someone could write me some jokes, I would happily be, and no, I'm joking. Um... So that's not something that I can really go into. But I'd love to go into something like broadcast journalism. I'd love to, you know, be on radio, um, improve interviewing skills. And that's all why, again, why I started this podcast as well, is, you know, sort of have an opportunity to improve my interviewing skills. Um, and if you went to the same school as I did, um, you'd know, like about a year ago, um, we did a live interview with Tom Hamer. And it didn't end very well, um, as I'm sure many of you know. Um because I didn't know what Netflix and chill meant until afterwards. And I said that phrase about four times. And in a school, when there's teachers in that room and you're saying that you're Netflix and chill, it's not, it's not a very good look. Um, yeah, it was very embarrassing. And the funny thing was, was I thought they were laughing at what I was saying when they were just laughing at me, which I don't have a problem with. If you want to laugh at me, I'm, I'm happy for you to laugh at me, right? Because again, it's me, it's, you know, I'm making you laugh. So I'm happy to do that. I'm quite glad that I've got that sort of ability to sort of brush it off. I'm happy to laugh at myself. I'm happy for other people to laugh at me to an extent, obviously. Um, but when we were doing that, it was, a, it was a live interview and I only had like 24 hours to prepare. I had no idea I was going to do this. And so, I, you know, I was sort of like looking him up, finding bits and bobs about him. And so, you know, the sort of typical question you'd ask, oh, by the way, Tom Hamer is a Paralympian. He's an athlete, uh, a swimmer. Um, and so I was, I was asking him um, questions about that. And um, yeah, it was just, it was, it was, I really enjoyed doing that. And I, I realized that, you know, what, I quite... I quite like asking questions. I've always sort of asked questions anyway. And when I look back and think about sort of, you know, when I'm just speaking to a random stranger and I'm asking them some more questions and I'm so deep into that conversation, um, it happens all the time. And so it's, you know, it's just, it, I don't know. It's, it's, it's something that um, I sort of enjoyed. And I realised that I've done that in the past, um, that I have just sort of spoken to people and almost in an interview style done it. And then there was another occasion, and this was when I sort of knew that something like interview would be so, I'd find it so fascinating, was when someone, um, we were doing an online sort of um, event with University of Reading, and there's uh, the host of the event, and then there's the students that I've joined, I can't even remember what it was, oh, it was origami or something, and the host um, 
you know, I found out that she was an international student. So I asked, I started asking her where she's from and she started telling me about so much, so much stuff that she's done in life and how she's traveled so, so many places and how she went to North Korea when she was eight years old because she has a Swiss passport and how I like, heard one of her parents is Dutch and the other one's, you know, Swedish or whatever. It was just mental. And I was asking so many questions and I barely did the actual task of the event and neither did she because we were so engrossed in the conversation. And then at the end, you know, a lot, uh, you know, two or three people sort of messaged and said, oh, you know, I really appreciate it. Oh, it was really good. Um, it was really good to listen. And one person sort of mentioned a podcast and I sort of brushed it off. Um, you know, I was like, yeah, whatever. And then someone later messaged and said, oh, I just love your insight to life. And I thought, if I can get people interested in other people, essentially. So essentially, if I can act as a bridge for a group of people and one of the, a, a person's message and sort of act as a bridge to get that message to those that group of people, I'd love to do that. Um, and to sort of act as a vessel for that, if you know what I mean, in whatever way possible. And if and with the Tom Hamer thing that happened in school, it was so good because I was originally told that he's not the biggest public speaker. So he sort of, you know, will need, you know, sort of he prefers the sort of questions and, you know, he might need, need to be guided. He didn't really, he didn't need to be guided at all, but he does prefer questions. And it was a lot better than I expected. Um, but like just being able to sort of help someone deliver their message and sort of, you know, speak about their experiences. Because not everyone is, I understand not everyone's, you know, good at communicating. I'm not the best at communicating and articulating myself. I'm also not the best at public speaking. And I, but I also understand there are other people that aren't, that I could help out. And there are also people that can help me, you know, articulate myself and, and improve my public speaking skills. And, you know, because, you know, that's what life is. It's all about improving one another and helping each other out and, you know, finding someone that needs help and helping them. And then find you finding someone that you need help from and they help you, hopefully. And I don't know, you just, it's just, I mean, I, want, I didn't even know I was going to talk about this, to be honest. It's not even written down in one of my things. Um, and I don't even know how I got onto this topic, but yeah, it's still, um, it's annoying because I thought, you know, a year ago, I was like, I can't wait to go to university. And now I'm just like, oh, I can't be bothered going back. I've not got motivation to finish these sort of essays. And these are the easy essays. This is the issue. These are the easy essays, the shorter ones that don't take as long. And I and I look back and think, bloody hell, in, in two years, I'm going to have two and a half years. I'm going to have a dissertation to do. And I can't imagine myself doing that. Like, I just can't imagine myself anymore um, focusing on anything to do with academia. I want to be doing something. And I almost feel like what I'm doing right now is essentially just a little bit of, a, a, you know, essentially a waste of time when it comes to the, what I'm learning. Because I feel like I can't actually practically put that into anything else. Okay, I'm learning about, you know, the Cold War and I'm learning a bit about um, people and power and whatever. And yeah, it's interesting. It is interesting to learn about when I'm learning in a seminar. Um, but I've never been an avid reader. I've never liked, I've, well, I have when I was really, really young, but I've, I've never been like a full on avid reader. I like audiobooks, but I've never been an avid reader. And these are pages upon pages of, of and it's reading that I don't even understand, which is annoying. Um, which just makes it worse and just makes me think, oh, I really can't be bothered. Um, and that's just not me. I'm, I'm, you know, at least in the past, I was a motivated guy and I wanted to do well. But I want to do well in something that I can see myself having a future in. And right now I don't. Like when in sixth form, I, I did, I, I was motivated because the goal was, well, when I go into university, these skills will help me. I made myself as busy as possible in sixth form because I knew I'd be busy in uni, you know, with socialising and stuff like that as well. And obviously the work. Um, but that just, you know, but now that I'm in uni, I'm like, well, what's the next step? It's, there's no sort of, you know, goal at the end. Um like there's there's almost no reason to, uh, and I don't know. Maybe maybe other people feel the same. If you do, let me know. Um, even even if the see that this the issue is originally when I started feeling like this, I thought oh it'll be it's because of COVID. Once COVID goes, then it'll get better. But now when I think even if COVID was to go, um, even if COVID was to go, I'd still not like it. Obviously, I'd enjoy them. You know, being able to get to know more people more. But I still wouldn't enjoy the reading and the lectures and just, you know, it's just, I just feel like it's not my thing. And I, I, I almost feel like I'm now, I'm one of those people that the universe just wasn't for them. And there's a lot of people that are like that. And it's okay to be like that. But I'm, you know, I don't know what my next step is. I know that I don't want, I want to be, I, want, I know I don't want to be in Haslington. I want to be away from home. That was the best decision I made. Yeah, just going away. 
even though I'm not permanently away, it was definitely the best decision I made. I, I could see improvements in being at home, you know, the, because the heart, the distance makes the heart grow fond. It helps to be distant from your family, to be distant from your loved ones, at least a little bit. Um, and I can see it's improved. And so I definitely want to keep that. But I, I just want something else. And I need to find that something else. And I've started almost kind of venturing out. You know, I'm promoting my podcast a lot more on social medias, on LinkedIn. I did a thread on management styles um, and linking management styles with um, the, the Man United manager um, and sort of how that's improved the sort of culture and the development of the team. If you're into football, you know, check out my LinkedIn. Um, I sort of, I post it on there. I've also posted it on Twitter as well, if you're interested. Um, at Real Tarek Ahmed on everything. Um, yeah, do check it out. Because um, I find that quite interesting. So even football journalism would interest me. But all of these sort of things, I almost feel like you need a degree. But well, you don't need it. You don't really need it. But it's very hard to go into without a degree. And I'm, I'm 100% up for the challenge. You know what I mean? And I feel like if this was normal circumstances, and I, it would obviously be a little easier, a lot easier perhaps, to get into something else and get an apprenticeship or get a degree apprenticeship or, you know, work somewhere. Um, it's just almost, it's just all about, you know, sort of finding it now. Um, it's, I was looking at, um, you know, radio, BBC Radio, like just sort of part-time jobs or student internships on the internet. And honestly, it's just, it proves how incompetent the BBC are. Because there were, not not the BBC, but just in general as to like why these applications are still up. There were applications on there from 2014 that had been ended. So why are they still there? You know, really good applica applications for like 16 to 18 year olds, 18, uh, 19 to 21 year olds, you know, looking for internships, looking for apprenticeships and stuff like that. I'm looking at them. I'm like, oh my God, this looks quite good. Oh, wait, the deadline was 23rd of June, 2016. Why is it still up? Take it down, you know. So many, most of them were, you know, out of date. You know, so I've emailed, um, I've emailed BBC Radio Berkshire, which is um, the radio in, in Reading, um, to see if they've got any opportunities there sort of to do some work experience on the weekend or something like that. Um, just to keep myself a bit more busy, I guess. Um, uh, I do help out at a soup, I don't know if I mentioned, I help out at a soup kitchen on Thursdays, which just helps with, you know, just having some extra to look forward to. It's really nice to be able to, because that's the thing in there, you can just have a chat with, with the people that come and, you know, the people that help out as well. It's great. You chat about, you know, how your week's been, what you've been up to, et cetera, et cetera. And it's just nice and fun. Um, even the other day when I was walking in, um, in Hasland and I was walking up to the halo and then when I was coming back down and I nearly slipped and the guy went, Oh, you're all right, pal. And then we just started talking. We started talking. He was telling me about his life and about how he's a HGV driver and how he's just recently bought a house in, in, in Haslingdon and how he loves it here. And he's, he, he's usually lived in like Manchester somewhere. And he was like, it's so much cheaper here. People are more friendly. You can have a chance. Then we were talking about football and cricket. And it was like, I miss conversations like that. Um, and it's not like I'm not getting that at university, but I sort of want more of that. I want to, again, another example of almost how I was almost sitting down and interviewing him. And I genuinely do feel, and I'm not trying to be arrogant here, but I feel like I have at least somewhat of an ability to speak to someone and for other people to be interested in that conversation. Like, I don't think, I think me on my own, I'm quite a boring person. I'm actually very surprised that even two people bother even clicking at this. But I think me with someone else and say you have a third person who's just listening will find it quite interesting. Um, and yeah, like, I feel like I can bring something to, to almost like, I feel like I have an ability to sort of bring out the message of someone and bring out the lessons that they've learned so that people who are listening can use those lessons and learn off those lessons. Um, and sort of get a better understanding of cultures and life and what have you. I feel like I have that ability. It's just, again, um, sort of being able to do that and how I can do that, what platform I can use. And, you know, and that sort of brings me on to something that I have written down as to what I did want to talk about or sort of, what are my plans for this podcast over the next year? And my plan that is to initiate to hopefully this time next year, um, to have an extra 45 to 52 episodes out. Um, I do want to, you know, consistently bring out an episode every week. I mean, it's not hard. It's literally a 20 minute video, but I want to improve this out of production side of it. Have a mic, uh, you know, 
mic like this and be able to speak into it. Um, I want to definitely get some guests on. Um, James and Ismail have this podcast that I said um, inspired me to start my own in, in the first episode. They've reignited their podcast and um, they both asked me to come on and hopefully they can come on mine as well. well. So once I can sort of figure out how to get more than one person on on a podcast um, and have it recorded visually and in an audio format that we can get we can get something going um you know get more guests on and again hopefully improve my interviewing skills but also just have a nice chat have a nice catch up one person suggested that they'd love to talk about on the podcast or love for me to talk about on the podcast about um the sort of music and the influence that music has on young people especially now i'm not the biggest sort of um personal music i didn't really listen to music until about year 10 and then it's still a bit on and off that I'm not really, I, I listen to music whilst I'm running and that's essentially about it. Sometimes when I go for a walk, but most of the time when I go for a walk, it's usually a book or a podcast or a radio, um, like a radio show. Um, but I sort of said, oh, do you want to come on or would you be happy to come on? And he was like, yeah, yeah, I'll do it. And I said, well, that's great. And he is someone who definitely is into music. I know 100% he goes to festivals and whatever. So I'd love to get him on and just learn more about how music has influenced his life. And especially as a young person, how he feels that music can influence people. Um, and that's, you know, sort of something that I want to learn about, like why people are so interested in music. Because for me, music is just sort of, you know, a bit of sound, you know, I, I, for me personally, it's never sort of had a massive influence on my life ever, you know, sorry. Um, I, again, I've always sort of been into podcasts and just listened to someone speak, then listening to someone sing. Um, yeah. And, you know, hopefully get James and Ismail on talk about whatever we can really. Yeah. Their podcast is out. Their podcast got a hypothetical boxing on, um, on Spotify. So check it out. It's a lot better than mine. Um, it's just two guys just chatting away about very interesting and intellectual topics. Something that we don't do at me, myself, and hopefully you. Um, but hopefully we will do in the future. Um, I sort of didn't actually talk about any of the... I was going to talk about sort of New Year's resolutions and stuff. Um, uh, do I talk about it next week? If I don't talk, think about any of the interesting topics, then... Um, then we can talk about that. I've sort of got, you know, a sort of technique that you can use to try and stay as consistent as possible. Um, uh, when it comes to your, um, what's it called? When it comes to your sort of beginner's resolution goals, um, I also um, had some stuff that I noted down about positive things going into 2021, which hopefully we can watch, uh, We I can talk to you about uh, next week because we need to stay positive. I said it, I said it last week, but I'm going to say it again. We need to stay positive. We need to stay on top of it. And, um, you know, positive affirmations. We need to manifest it into the universe and then hopefully it'll come back. Whether you believe in God, whether you believe in no God or whatever, you need to, you know, the, the law of, I can't remember what the word, the law of attraction, I think that's what it is, is in literally in every religion, is in every sort of spiritual guide or whatever. You know, it's the idea of, you know, you, you, if you exhibit that sort of energy, that energy will come back to you. If you exhibit the energy of, you know, being nice, or being kind, or being friendly, you will get that back. And so if you exhibit the energy of, I will do well in 2021, I will, you know, exercise more, be healthy, etc., then you'll do it. Or at least you'll hopefully do it. And, um, but yeah, I think, yeah, maybe next week we'll talk about that. Or we'll talk about something completely different. Maybe coronavirus will die next week you know, things crossed and we can all go back to normal or maybe not. Um, but we shall see. Anyway, I hope you all have a lovely week. This has been 23 minutes, which is great. Um, give me some suggestions of what we want me to talk about next week. Hopefully I've done my essay by then. Fingers crossed, probably haven't. Um, and yeah, have a nice week. Enjoy yourselves. Let me know if you've got any suggestions. Make sure you like, comment and subscribe. Uh, make sure you share it to your friends. Please do share it. Honestly, it means the world to me. One person shared it. And it, that one person, Millie, right? I'm looking at you right now. You ended up getting at least five extra listeners, which is mad. Because five of the people ended up messaging me after they saw it on, on your story. Saying, oh my God, um, as if you've got a podcast, I'm going to listen to it. People that I didn't have on Instagram message me. And so, you know, it does help out. So do share it. I do appreciate it. Anyway, I need to stop chatting away. Thank you very much. Have a nice day and a week. Hopefully the hair and beard looks better. See you in a bit.